So we go back into the Chugs, which I think would be a great name for an album. Back to the Chugs. Um, <laughs> Cause, because <laughs> Chugs is probably already several bands' names, right? Oh, yeah. If you've not got a guitar band called the Chugs, you ain't worth knowing. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Other Falls. My name's Dom, his name's Andy. When I was young, younger than before, I never saw the truth hanging from the door. And now I'm older, see it face to face. And now I'm older, gotta get up, clean the place. And I was green, greener than the hill, where flowers grow, sun shone still now i'm darker than the deepest sea just hand me down give me a place to be more on that later but first andy what truth do you have to dispense to us the mortals ah oh, a band called meat puppets are you familiar with the meat puppets could be could be could be all right. Um, I know their first album, which I believe is just called Meat Puppets. And I have their second album, which I, is called Meat Puppets 2. And that's as far as the story goes. Okay. All right. Well, the story does go well on beyond that. And so does this, this track comes from beyond that. It's a track called Backwater. Okay. So. Okay. Well, I've got my preconceptions of uh, meat puppets. I thought you might. So we'll see what happens next. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the meat puppets i remember um starts off with that really nice it's kind of that alternative 90s guitar that's kind of blues blues based um owes a lot to jay masses yeah um sounds gorgeous just instantly love it and then we he starts singing and we're into this up-tempo breezy little number <laughs> i'm in shock actually this is so weird um right let's bring that back need to um reset my mind <laughs> kind of familiar like it sounds like something that sounds like something that i know but can't place maybe sort of generic -y sounding but this is so catchy <laughs> and so breezy and 
I kind of hate myself for it, but I really like it. <laughs> I really like it. You can't help but like this. But yeah, this is so wildly different. Wow. Just when we're sheltered under paper, the rockets come at us sideways. Something will never change. They stand there looking backwards at the conscious from the pain. They may seem rearranged. In the backwater swirling, there is something that will never change. Love it. When I wake up in the morning my face There's a blood that's flowing through the ceiling With a knife to open up the sky's veins Some things will never change They just stand there looking backwards Have unconscious from the pain They may see just have to say the drummer's doing a great job Nothing over the top He's doing these nice little transitions Um some bits a bit, a couple of fills, a couple of extra beats in there and splashes. I'm really liking it. Rearranged in the backwater swirl and there is something that will never change. Some things will never change. They stand there looking back with that unconscious from the pain. They may see me rain. Yeah, that was unexpected. Um, I don't really know too much about Moo Puppets. It's those first couple of albums, really, um, which were what? Early to mid 80s? I don't know, but I'm willing to bet this was post Nevermind. I know that Cobain dropped their name a lot. And. Um, yeah, I reckon. It's a really nice sound. You can't knock it at all. Um, just because you know, it's a different sound doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, I think it's pretty commercial. I'd surprise if this wasn't a hit. It just depends what sort of backing they got. So a lot of this sort of stuff around. But this is really radio friendly. Um, yeah, great sounding guitars. The vocals are fairly... Vanilla, but fine, you know. I really like the drum work on it. It just all had a really nice drive to it. But yeah, bouncy as well. Just quality, actually. Yeah, really liked it. Really liked it. Okay, let's go back and find out exactly what the hell's going on by speaking with Comrade Andy. All right, so you've returned from the banks. Uh, what did you mm -hmm. make of Backwater? I know I've used this quote before, but I bloody love it, so I'll use it again. This is not Mel Torbe. Um, firstly, I was shocked by the sound of this. So shocked that after 25 seconds, I had to stop and start it again. So I wasn't shocked. 
by the initial 90s, old 90s distorted lead guitar that if you sawed it in half, it would have several rings right in the centre that label blues. You know, it comes mm. from that room. And it's not a million miles away from sort of the work of Jay Massis. You know, it's got that lovely sound. It sounded absolutely gorgeous and um, completely and utterly up my strasse, as they say in Dusseldorf. <laughs> um, yeah, there was also, as he was doing the... There was a second guitar. It felt like it was subtly, like, almost threading around and through the main riff. Um Distortion embroidery by way of sympathetic chords. Love it. Um, there was an agreeable beat and some really nice bass, just putting down the decking for these guys to do their, their little show. But it was a very brief intro. Now, the meat puppets that I do know, um, for us particularly that second album, they do about six or eight different genres on that album, from proto-grunge, noise, rock, to hoedowns, to ballads, to freight train blues. All of them actually have got a tinge of country, which is very different from their first album, which was just noise, really. <laughs> yeah, enjoyable noise, but it was noise. It's a bit like really early, sort of you. So, you know, this intro was well within my bounds of expectations. And then we shift into the verse. And wow. And he sings, well, when I wake up in the morning to feel the daybreak on my face. And that's about where I stopped listening to the words. Because <laughs> uh, I was so surprised. So there's this like two, three chug riff do 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 on top of this really jaunty beat, and suddenly we have something which I can only describe, and only in the context of this is shocking as radio friendly, which I wouldn't have ever thought of saying that about Ami Puppet song, and not at all what I was expecting, Mister Bond. Um, it's breezy, up tempo and as catchy as hell. Um, the drummer's doing all these really tasteful sort of milli fills and cymbal hits, which are kind of shadowed by the chords from the guitar. So as the, the verse goes into the chorusy type bit, then the guitar's opened up to fuller notes and, you know, they're proper. And they got these chords which have been splashed as well. And it's really nice. And he sings the words, some things never change. And I'm thinking some things bloody do change because this is <laughs> <laughs> what I heard before. Um, it almost has, and I don't mean this in a direct, you know, a detrimental way, but it almost has a throwaway quality because of the effortless nature of the song. I mean, it just feels just, you know, e easy pickings for these guys. Mm -hmm. um, and his vocals absolutely fit in with that vibe as well. It's really sort of loose and just, you know, chilled. Um and as I said in the reaction, and I said it's a bit tongue in cheek, but I kind of hated myself a little bit because I really liked it <laughs> and I instinctively liked it. It's like I had no conscious say in the matter. It's like bang, gut reaction. You like this, okay? You know. <laughs> well, what about all my alternative cred? Fuck off. This is really good. You know. Yes. So we go back into the chugs, which I think would be a great name for an album. Back to the chugs. Um, <laughs> Because because <laughs> Chugs is probably already several bands' names, right? Yeah, oh yeah. If you've not got a guitar back called the Chugs, you weren't worth knowing. Anyway, yeah. um, so we have the same structure again, and then we get to the second chorus, and we traverse fairly swiftly, thank God, across the bridge, and we go into the first guitar solo, and it really pleasingly it picks up the same riff motif from the intro, mm. and just slightly expands. There's more understated, but excellent work from the drummer he's doing these little transitions extra beats and all the simple work splashes and it's decorating it all really tastefully uh, he did stand out for me the drummer apart from the guitar work um and then as the violent femmes would say third verse same as the first um a <laughs> little bit louder and a little bit worse not in this case well not worse at least um and so we get that and then we get and again it's the this is this is exactly the same as the first verse and then we get my favorite bit which is very fleeting but coming in from from a distance you know getting bigger and bigger on his moped is the second guitar solo and initially there's this sort of rattling throttling noise and then Big Brother Guitar takes over with that same intro riff again. And then Little Brother Guitar does the same 
thing as before, but he's no longer just threatening Brody. He's saying, fuck it, I'm as big as you, and he's killing it as well. <laughs> and they both sound superb together. They're, you know, they're yeah. tangled up. Um, but just like life, it is all too fleeting, and we get this fairly quick slowdown, and we're out. Um, so, yeah, this is a really surprisingly commercial sound. I mean, surely it must have been a hit somewhere, you know, in, uh, I'd imagine in America at least, or at least college radio stuff. Yeah. I don't really know that much about Me Puppets. The two albums I heard, I think, were mid-'80s. I know they were ahead of their time, definitely, and they were kind of feeling their way through to their sound. I, mean, I said the reaction, I have a feeling from this that this is post Nevermind. And I do remember that Cobain used to drop their name a lot. And I think that's probably, this is the sound after Nevermind made that huge tidal wave that we've all talked about ad nauseum. Mm -hmm. um, you can't knock it though, because it's just a great catchy tune. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'll be going back to the well to listen to this for repeated listens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you might like it. I had a haunting suspicion that if you knew anything from Me Puppets, it would have been some of that early stuff. And I'll get into that and sort of their evolution as I get into the band. But um, I'm glad that you hadn't heard this and that you you have and that because you heard the original stuff, you almost struggled with the listenability of yeah, yeah. this particular track compared compared to what you do know about the band. Because they 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 are a band that really exemplifies growth and change in their sound, which is something mm. that I think they've always strived towards when they put out a new album. So yeah, that's a uh, fun fun uh, for me as the as the suggester to you to, to to hear you experience that and know that you heard that early stuff and had that only that to hold up against this a very much different, more polished sound. So yeah, um, I mean, I mean, that's the the change from the first to the second album is like you know quantum leap but anyway it's just they're all back in the day so yeah i guess i'd pick the first and the second album up within you know weeks of each other as opposed to a year or two yeah so it didn't yeah. hit me as it just oh it's a different sound okay i got over it pretty quick and then having listened to them for a couple of decades then i'll get this that's probably the same jump as that people have got from the first to second yeah. like what the hell but we complain when bands don't change and we complain when they do change. So there's no winning, is there? No, you know? no. So there were all the more reason for bands just to do whatever the fuck they want. You know exactly. What I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, you're along or you're not along for the ride, you know, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. They'll get other people to jump on that bandwagon. I'm sure. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, uh, me puppets, uh, American rock band formed in January, 1980 out of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, the group's original lineup was Kurt Kirkwood on guitar and vocals his brother Chris Kirkwood on bass, guitar, and vocals, and Derek Bostrom on drums. Uh, they started as a punk rock band, but like most of their label mates on SST Records, they established their own unique style, uh, blending punk with country and psychedelic rock and featuring Kurt's kind of warbling vocal delivery. Uh, Me Puppets have influenced a number of rock bands, including Nirvana, Soundgarden, Dinosaur Jr., Sebado, yeah pavement and jawbreaker um all of those bands have at least been discussed on this channel and some of them have been featured on this channel so all the more reason to bring some me puppets to the table yeah yeah uh, uh lou barlow has said me puppets are the sing are sing are the singularly most influential band on both dinosaur jr and sebado i kick myself for not ever emphasizing this enough said jay Masis. uh is it masses or Masis? i say masses but uh... okay who knows? Uh, he also noted uh people thought we were meat puppet ripoffs at first um which i thought was an <laughs> interesting uh tidbit there uh their earliest ep in a car was made entirely of short hardcore punk with goofy lyrics and attracted the attention of joe carducci uh as he was starting to work with the legendary punk label sst records that i mentioned Cardu carducci suggested they sign with the label and meat puppets released their first album meat puppets in 1982 which you have listened to 82 jesus yeah right wow. <laughs> by the release of 1984's meat puppets 2 the band members were so sick of the hardcore thing according to bostrom and so the band began experimenting with acid rock and country and western sounds while still retaining some punk influence uh, Me Puppets 2 turned the band into one of the leading bands on SST Records, and along with the Violent Femmes and the Gun Club and others, helped establish this, uh, the genre called cowpunk. 
Uh, Meat Puppets 2 was followed by 1985's Up on the Sun. The album's psychedelic sound resembled the folk rock of the birds. While the songs still retained hardcore influences in the lengths of the songs and the tempos, uh, these two albums were mainstays of college and independent radio at the time. During the rest of the 1980s, Meat Puppets remained on SST and released a series of albums while touring relentlessly. In early 87, they released perhaps their most psychedelic album, Mirage, which used synthesizers and electronic drums and is widely considered their most polished album. So if you really want to be bowled wow. over by how cleaned up their sound is, I would suggest maybe go peek out uh, Mirage. Uh, their next album, the ZZ Top inspired Huevos, uh, came out less than six <laughs> months afterward in late summer of 1987. So again, Mirage and and um, uh, Huevos came out in the same year. That's how much they were yeah. pumping out music at this time. It's pretty incredible. Um, this is in stark contrast to its predecessor. Huevos was recorded in a swift, fiery fashion with many first takes and minimal second guessing. Monsters was released in 1989 featuring new elements to their sound with extended jams and heavy metal. This album was mostly motivated by the Meat Puppet's desire to attract the attention of a major label, as they were becoming frustrated with SST records at the time. Two years after their final studio recording for SST, SST 1989's Monsters, the trio released their first major label album, Forbidden Places, on the indie-friendly friendly London Records. The band chose London Records because it was the first label that ZZ Top, one of their favorite bands, was signed to. Forbidden Places combined many elements of the band's sound over the years, cowpunk, psychedelia, riffy, heavier rock, while some songs had a more laid-back, early alternative sound. Despite being a fan favorite, Forbidden Places is now out of print, and as such, it remains highly sought a, a highly sought collectible online. So there you go. If you ever want to go fishing for a rarity, <laughs> um, uh, fun fact: in 1992, following his departure from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, guitarist John Frusciante auditioned for the band. Uh, Chris Kirkwood stated he showed up with his guitar out of its case and barefoot. Um, it didn't work out. Uh, obviously, John Frusciante was in a really interesting place at that time um and i just don't think that he was ready to settle into another band after leaving the red hot chili pepper so the audition really never produced anything other than an interesting anecdote uh in <laughs> 1993 uh meat puppets achieved mainstream popularity when nirvana's kurt cobain who became a fan after seeing them open for black flag in the 80s invited chris and kurt to join him on mtv unplugged for the acoustic performance oh, yeah. of plateau yeah yeah, yeah yeah so for the acoustic performances of plateau omi and lake of fire all originally uh from meat puppets 2 uh yeah. the resulting album mtv unplugged in new york served as a swan song for nirvana as cobain died less than five months after the concert lake of fire became a cult favorite for its particularly wrenching vocal performance from Cobain. Subsequently, the Nirvana exposure and the strength of the single Backwater, their highest charting single, there you go, helped lift Meat Puppets to new commercial heights. The band's studio uh, return was 1994's Too High to Die, produced by Butthole Surfers guitarist Paul Leary. The album featured Backwater, which, re which reached number 47 on the Billboard Top 100, uh, and hidden track update of Lake of Fire as well as featured. This album uh, also features a more straightforward alternative rock style with occasional moments of pop, country, and neo-psychedelic moments. Too High to Die earned the band uh, a gold record, 500,000 copies sold, outselling their previous records combined. The band uh, would go on to release seven more studio, seven more albums, but uh, not without any hiccups. They would They would take a hiatus, uh, then reform with new members aside from aside from Kurt, the the front man, and then break up, and then finally reform again in 2006, within a year after Chris Kirkwood, uh, Chris Kirkwood's release from prison in 2005. He was arrested in December of 2003 for attacking a security guard at the main post office in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, using the guard's own baton to beat him. The guard then shot Kirkwood in the stomach at least twice during the melee, causing serious gunshot injuries requiring major surgery. Kirkwood was subsequently denied bail, the judge citing his previous drug arrests and probation violations. He was subsequently released in July of 2005. 
Too High to Die is the eighth studio album from the American rock band Me Puppets. The album was released on January 5th, 1994. The album's title is a parody of the Ramones 1984 album, Too Tough to Die. Um, yeah. And Too, Too High to Die sold very well due to the success of the single Backwater, Blackwater, or pardon me, Backwater. Um, and the, the album uh, itself reached number one on the Heat Seekers chart. So let's jump into those lyrics that you caught the first two lines of, and that was about it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and when I wake up in the morning to feel the daybreak on my face, there's a blood that's flowing through the feeling with a knife to open up the sky's veins. Some things will never change. They stand there looking backwards, half unconscious from the pain, half unconscious conscious from the pain. They may seem rearranged in the backwater swirling. There's something that will never change. And when I should have been gone a long time, laughs and says I find ways. Just when we're shat just when we're sheltered under paper, the rockets come at us sideways. Some things will never change. They stand there looking backwards, half unconscious from the pain. They may seem rearranged in the backwater swirling. There's something that will never change. Hey, I'm blind. Good, fine. Roll the time on whose dime guitar solo and when i wake up in the morning to feel the daybreak on my face there's a blood that's flowing through the ceiling with a knife to open up the sky's veins some things will never change they stand there looking backwards half unconscious from the pain they may seem rearranged in the backwater swirling there are some things that will never change some things will never change they stand there looking backwards half unconscious from the pain they may seem rearranged in the backwater swirling there is something that will never change um many believe the song is about kurt kirkwood's heroin use and addiction probably little surprise given when given when this came out in the genre that we're discussing um a backwater is like a, a body of water on a river which is kept from fl flowing forwards by a force of the current the imagery of the backwater swirling is a metaphor Kurt uses to describe how his drug abuse affects him. The river represents his life's path. The current holding back the river represents the heroin and the backwater that that the current creates represents how heroin has his life in this repetitive swirling cycle with no way forward. So, um, yeah, no. <laughs> No groundbreaking subject matter here from an early 90s alt grunge rock uh, tune. There are plenty of songs about it, some of which we've covered on this channel. Um, do like the use of metaphor, though. They are interesting lyrics, and they are delivered in a really accessible package, especially when you consider it's meat puppets. So um, yeah. it's almost fortuitous that you are familiar with the early stuff and got to hear this because it really is an interesting juxtaposition as I would imagine. And I think it is um, from a lot of like album to album. I mean, these guys have like 15 albums. Sounds like it. Yeah. 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 So they, they do a lot of changing and, and altering of their sound while still, I think trying to maintain a core essence of who they are as musicians. So great band, highly, highly influential band to a lot of the, bands and genres that we cover on this channel so i thought it only fitting to try to get these oh, guys yeah. in here almost shame on me for not having done it sooner um but yeah really glad the the me puppets are now featured on the audio files mm -hmm. yeah excellent. thanks for giving a listen man mm, my pleasure excellent excellent well all that out of the way everybody out there in the listening audience let us know what you think of meat puppets of this track in particular of any of their other tracks on all like i said all 15 of their albums um there is some other stuff by them i would like to revisit it's good to know that i'll have to avoid uh one and two since you're familiar with them but uh yeah really influential band i like them a lot uh guys again jump in the comments field let us know what you think also like share and subscribe if you'd be so inclined and if you haven't already uh trying to grow the channel um we're pushing forward towards a thousand and we can't get to there and beyond it without you we really really do appreciate that all that out of the way hopefully john and i will see all y'all in growing numbers on the next episode of the audio files see you later guys